The human mind is something that's shaped by the forces of biological evolution. Well, let's take that seriously for a moment. You're either a blank slate, a rationalist, let's say, on which anything can be written whatsoever, or you actually have an intrinsic human nature. Now, you can't have it both ways. And what this means to me is that the dialogue between evolutionary biologists and people who theorize about religious beliefs has barely even begun. And the reason it hasn't yet begun is because the evolutionary biologists and the rationalists don't know a damn thing about religion. And their way around that is to make the most pathetic straw man possible out of the complex structure of ancient beliefs, attribute them to someone who has the mental capacity of a 13-year-old, and then proceed to use their high IQ to crush their opponents. Well, that's just not going to work because the systems of thought that are derided by evolutionary biologists and rationalists are complex beyond belief, and they haven't spent the time unpacking them. Now, we'll leave that aside for a moment, and I'm going to go after a more central element of Dr. D'Souza's argument. He said there's no such thing as the sacred. Okay, so let me give you one thing that convinced me that there was something that was sacred. I started doing the studying that I've been doing because I was trying to solve the problem of what happened during the Nazi era and in the Holocaust. And what, what really got me was one story. And I read a story about uh, Nazi prison guard in Auschwitz who had uh, the Jewish prisoners who were already three quarters dead, pretty much headed for death anyways, to carry wet sacks of salt from one side of the compound to another and then back again. 100 pound wet sacks of salt. So you see, That was something that was of absolutely no worth to anyone, right? And that was the demonstration that was being made by the guard. You could put someone in a god-awful situation and do whatever you want to make it worse. And I thought, now, nah, good, I found my absolute, I found my thing that's sacred. That's wrong. Wrong, period. And that was what the Nuremberg judgment said, too, that that was wrong. There's some forms of behavior that cross culturally above rationality because you don't want to debate about the viciousness of Auschwitz. Some things are wrong, absolutely wrong. And that gives you a solid ground to stand on, right? Because as soon as you know that one thing is absolutely wrong, you've got your absolute. And then you can start thinking about what might be absolutely right. And even if you don't know what it is, here's a proposition. What it is, it's the exact opposite pattern of behavior that led to the Holocaust in Auschwitz. And if we're going to take what happened in the 20th century seriously, then we better start thinking about morality seriously. And that debate has not started yet.